Welcome to 3Mac. Do you want to learn about computational design, advanced manufacturing, materials modeling, or integrity assessment? Then this is the channel for you. I regularly upload new content, so please hit the subscribe button below for regular updates. Hello everyone. Welcome to today's video. This video is again based on a subscriber's request where the subscriber requested to create a short video on composite delamination so i just created this fictitious problem you can also find a similar problem in abacus documentation in the example menu and if you want to access to this model again you can go back to this website and this is our own website and you can download the models if you need it so what we're going to do today is we have two composite layers again these can have many plies maybe 10 11 12 whatever and then somewhere in the middle you can have one ply which is failing or maybe you can have many different interfaces i'm just going to model one of the interfaces here which will delaminate these are this edge is fixed while in this edge i will apply a boundary condition which soon looks something like this where i will try to open up the cracks so it's more like a mode one type of delamination but you can apply other loads as well in a similar way and then obviously the outcome would look something like this. There are many different approaches to this. You can use VCCT, which is virtual crack closure technique in Abacus, where you can define the interface as a contact property, and then you use VCCT to define a criteria where your crack will open as the deformation goes on. The second approach is the cohesive modeling approach, which I am gonna use in this short tutorial so this there will be a you see as you see this dark color there will be a cohesive layer here and delamination will propagate along this cohesive layer as the cohesive element starts to fail all the properties i have taken from my previous tutorials and also from abacus documentation so you can have a look at that again the idea is to show you the procedure rather than giving you the explicit solution or explicit values for a specific thing so let's get into our case and see how we can do this kind of simulation okay so as i showed you before this is this is what we are after and if i if i play the animation you will see we start with this and then we start to open up and you see crack starts to propagate and it stops somewhere here so this is what we are going to achieve in today's video so i will just show you what, what i have done here and the idea is again to show you the process rather than show you how to make the geometries so first thing i did was i created a part which is a 2d part deformable and shell part and i created this rectangle again this is 100 by 20 millimeters i think and then i created another part which was the top part of the same thing and it is also 100 by uh, 10 10 or 20 millimeters then i created a cohesive layer and again you can see it's a very thin layer again it comes from the the epoxy bonding but you can define this thickness based on the geometry if you have you can even use a very small value to make it more like a sharp interface as well and we have tried that and it works so again it depends on you how what is the size of the cohesive zone or cohesive uh, layer which will delaminate and you can decide the geometry on this so now we have three parts composite one composite two which can have again different plies and if you are not familiar about defining different plies you can go back to my video on defining or modeling composite diff composite failure and where i showed you how to define different plies there so i'm not going to discuss about that i will just use orthotropic properties for the two layers for for this case okay so let's go to the properties again as i told you the prop material you need to create the material first and you can see i have two materials one is for the composite which is for part one and three and the other one is for cohesive zone which is the delamination layer so for, let's start with the composite again if you're not familiar with composite modeling have a look at this video on the top and that will explain everything and and these are the properties i have used for this and again i'm using engineering constants elastic properties i'm not modeling any damage in the composite right now but again you can use hashin type damage models which I have discussed in the videos before so you can use those parameters so you can have a simultaneous failure and that is the delamination as well as failure in the composites because sometimes what happens if your delamination starts and then the crack deviates and goes into the composite as well so again that might be another thing again it depends on you what sort of complications you really want into it so this is for that again I have referred the paper this is again from Abacus documentation so you can look at this paper for these properties 
for composite cohesive layer i have used the properties again given in the same abacus documentation i'm using some fictitious values here and again there are no physical meaning to these but you can change those so so i need to define the elastic response which is the first part of the stress strain curve then i'm using a quadratic stress space damage criteria and i have to define the nominal stresses in the normal mode first direction and the second direction which are the shear modes most probably and then the damage evolution part which is the part where your stress strain curve goes down so these are the things i have defined again these are just fictitious some of the values might not be very realistic but just to this is just for demonstration purposes so i keep this now so once you have defined the material properties then you have to create a section right so you go to the section manager and you press create button so when you create button comes up so in, this is the section number let's just start with section number one so if you go to section number one you can see i created a solid homogeneous section and i selected the composite material properties and i press ok and that's what i have here the second one we need to create a cohesive section and in this case we will select cohesive law and then from here we have to select the cohesive material properties and other than the composites as i showed you before and then we are saying there is a traction separation law so you can define that you have other options as well and you can again look in abacus documentation if you're modeling for example a gasket or, or something else so that's what i have done here now we need to tell abacus okay which section belongs to which part so what you have to do you just have to press this create section button select this part and for example i will select this part and then when you press done then you will have the option which section it is so you will select cohesive element because these are cohesive zone and when you press ok then abacus will know okay this part is already assigned so for example in this case you see i have already assigned section 2 which is a cohesive zone with the cohesive material properties to this section similarly what i have done is if i go to the other parts you see here i have assigned it to be composite so again you press create and then you assign it to that as i have done before so if i click on this you can see this part is basically section one with comp solid homogeneous properties and i'm using the same material properties which are called composite if you want to define the orientation and everything I, this is not the in the scope of this video but you can look at the material orientation video on the top and that will help you understand how to define the orientation as well in abacus for different materials which i am not gonna discuss today so now abacus knows what all these three parts are made up of so now we go to the assembly module and we start instancing parts so you go to the instance part and then you can select all these parts and you can bring them here and then once they are here you see they are all around the place so you can use the translate option to align them together so that's what i have done this is the top part this is the bottom part and in between i have this cohesive layer here so once i have defined those i need to now go to the next part where i have to tell abacus which step i'm going to do in this case as you see i'm going to fix this edge fully while i will open this thing up so it's a more like a static problem so i'm going to go with static general step again i'm not changing anything i'm using non-linear geometric option total time is one i'm using a very large number of increments in case if it goes above 100 increments then it should not stop but it should continue initial increment size is 0.01 while the maximum should be 0.1 so that i get uh, at least a sim ample num number of outputs in my in my simulation and then this is the minimum time increment if it doesn't converge it will start to reduce the time increment and this is the minimum it can go up to so this is what i have done in in the outputs i have to ask for a few things so for example i need to ask for the status because once the cohesive element fails it will delete we delete it so status is always required similar to the damage simulation i showed you in the previous videos for damage models and also i have asked for the damage criteria but they might not be relevant in this case so this is the one thing which you have to do and then we go to the interaction what i have to do now is since we have three components so what we have to do is i'll just zoom it in yeah so you see i need to define a tie constraint between the top layer and the cohesive layer here so this is there's a tie constraint here and then i have to do the same here between the two layers so that they all become one jointed or bonded part and when it starts to deform everything will start to deform and then once the cohesive zone element fail or the material fail they will start to delete in this case this material will not fail because i only have defined the elastic properties but as i told you you can define the machine damage model for your composite as well 
So what I have done is you go to the interaction here and you press create and tie and then it will ask you to select the surfaces. So I already have, you can select the surface manually. I already created surfaces. So I just selected the relevant surfaces and I created the interaction. Once you have selected the interaction correctly, you will see these yellow things. And this means your interaction is defined, which is a tie constraint in this case. Once you have done that, we go to the next module, which is the loading module. I have no forces here. All is I have fixed everything on this side to keep my life simple. And you can see it's just this one. So I can select U1, U2 to be zero. And that's it. From this side, I have to define a vertical displacement in the uh, in the y direction, which is, should be a positive one. So I'm giving a 20 millimeter of displacement here. Again, this is just a random value I'm giving. And similarly for the bottom, I will define a minus 20 because it has to go down in the negative y direction. So that's what I have done here. Everything is ramp. This means it will increase linearly as the simulation continues. That's done. Then we go to the meshing. So you have to do meshing part by part. So this is a continuum part. So you can select the element type by selecting the component. And then see in this case, I'm using a plane strain element because it's a plane strain problem. And I'm using incompatible modes to avoid any kind of uh, incompatibility coming from the different element bending or whatever. As you remember, in my other video, I already discussed um, when I was giving you meshing tips. So that's what I've done here for this case. And for the, so the same is done for this part as well. And for the cohesive part, if you click on this thing, then you see I have basically selected the cohesive elements and I say element deletion to be yes. And it's a linear cohesive element, which are these ones. So this is how it looks like. Once I have done that, I can just select the mesh inside and then I mesh it and that's it, what I've done. So once I done, done that, I go to the job, I will create a job, select the name and everything. And then this is the job here. And then I will submit. And now I'm running the job and you see the job is running. So it's going on, you can monitor the job. Input processing was okay. And it's finished in quick time because the model is really small. So once it's finished, you can go to the results. So these are your results now. Press the control plots and Abracadabra, everything is working fine. You can play around with the with this stuff and you see how the crack really propagates. So I hope this is the way you can do it. You can apply more two type of fracture, shear, tearing, whatever, using this kind of methodology and it should be working. So I hope you find it useful. If you have any questions, comment below or let me know. If you have any question, I will try to help you out. Again, if you want to download the file, model file, then you can go to our website and you should be able to do that. Thank you very much and bye for now.